in the memory of late Mrs. Alka Hemant Patil. We are glad to present our audio articles for inspiring disabled persons to achieve greater heights in their career. Under the project of Client Service Department of National Association for the Blind, India, to empower the disabled in tribal, rural and semi-urban areas of our country. Lal Advani Debt of Social Welfare, Government of India New Delhi Thoughtfully he searches for the APT word, the telling phrase, for at heart Lal Advani is a writer and loves the wizardry of words. In his capacity as Special Officer for the Handicapped, Department of Social Welfare, Government of India, he has plenty of opportunities to use them in the papers he prepares for the innumerable conferences he attends and the many speeches he delivers in his deep and pleasing voice. Keenly sensitive to the human aspect involved in rehabilitating the handicapped, he used the evocative phrase, the receding mist as the theme of an address at a recent conference at Pune. This he said was to conjure up in the mind vivid image of the centuries of neglect which enveloped the handicapped and the attempts now being made both by government and by voluntary agencies to dispel them. As a representative of the government he points out that there are nearly 20 million handicapped children in India, and after independence, schools for the blind and the deaf have risen about four times and for the mentally retarded 20 times. As against 11 lakhs rupees in the first five-year plan, the fifth plan has a provision for 1,100 lakhs rupees for rehabilitation. Governmental assistance to voluntary agencies has risen from 75% to 90% and 7,200 scholarships were awarded in the fourth plan against 50 in the first. Latest measures include offers of assistance to voluntary agencies for setting up workshops employing various categories of the handicapped and a project to set up a national institute for each major category handicapped persons blind, the deaf, the orthopedically handicapped and mentally retarded. Lal Advani acquired handicap early in life, chiefly, he suspects, due to the use of unsterilized instruments at the time of his birth. Infection set in which later led to glaucoma and loss of vision. Born in 1923 in Hyderabad Sindh, son of a school teacher, he obtained a degree from the Punjab University and in 1944 was invited by Dr. Klutha Mackenzie to be a Braille instructor at the newly opened St. Dunstan's Home for the War Blind, Dehradun. In 1947, he joined the Education Ministry and in 1952 he won a UN Fellowship which led him to England where he wrote a book Blind Welfare in the UK. In 1963, he proceeded ed to the Perkins Institute for the Blind in America and took his M. Ed degree from Boston his subject being college, mental retardation. The next year he married. His wife Nalini is a senior librarian at the Maulana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. They have a 10-year-old son. Lal has done a lot of ghost-retire writing and plans to collaborate on a book on education for the handicapped. Recently he was asked to prepare the script for a documentary on the same subject which so dear to his heart. Film Those who are handicapped are fortunate indeed in having such a good friend in such a key position. Suresh Ahuja Executive Officer National Association for the Blind Bombay When you are 18, and the whole world lies before you full of fun and adventure, and suddenly tragedy strikes like a ball from the blue, what do you do? Young Suresh Ahuja took it squarely on the chin and has never looked back since. Undeterred by loss of sight due to detachment of the retina in 1948, he went on to complete his BA from Elphinstone College his MA with politics from the Bombay University and obtain ed a certificate in social science and administration from the London School of Economics, University of London in 1956. Whilst in London, Sure started taking an increasing and enthusiastic interest in blind welfare work which ultimately led him to opt for a job in this line on his return to Bombay. Today, Suresh is the executive officer of the National Association for the Blind, India, with its headquarters at Bombay.
As such, he is a member of several governmental committees on work for the blind and has written a number of articles and presented several papers at conferences, both national and international. He attended the second, third and fourth Asian Conference on Work for the Blind held in Kuala Lumpur, Manila and Bombay. He also attended three World Assemblies of the World Council for the Welfare of the Blind in New York, New Delhi, and Sao Paulo. As Vice Chairman of the Committee on Asian Affairs of the World Council for the Welfare of the Blind, he was responsible for the smooth organization of the Fourth Asian Conference on Work for the Blind in 1973. Since 1974 he heads that committee as its chairman. As if he is not busy enough, Suresh finds time to be a part-time insurance agent as well. He is also chairman of P. Lena & Sons India Limited, exporters of bone fertilizer. His advice to other handicapped people, don't sit back and wait for opportunities to come to you, go for them. Well read he takes a lively interest in current affairs, and he has visit widely travelled at 25 countries including UK, USA, USSR, Europe and the Far East. Suresh visits the theatre frequently and is fond of a game of bridge. Happily married, with children, he has a going, versatile personality and a conversation which is loaded with a laugh a minute that is highly infectious. Suresh was a best administrator NAB India has found. Under his strict discipline administrator NAB, India have progressed in many fields. Under his guidance a lot of NAB's department developed and grown to fullest extent. Under his leadership NAB has established state branches in 23 states of our country. NAB, I, has also established 95 district branches in our country. Mr. Ahuja was promoted as an executive director of NAB India. He had convincing ability while dealing with government authorities, welfare trusts and donors, which helped NAB in establishing their premises at Worley Sea Phase, Mumbai and Cotton Green, Mumbai were the activities of NAB India started to serve the blind for their socio-economic integration promoting educational training, employment, self-employment, empowerment of blind women and total rehabilitation. The relationship network of Mr. Ahuja helped NAB in collecting large amount of funds to run and develop its activities. His wife Mrs. Suvarna Ahuja was also a renowned dedicated social worker. She helped in developing teachers for the blind. Mrs. Ahuja wrote a book known as Bharti Braille Shikshak. The book was spread throughout our country and created a revolution in the Braille literacy among us the blind persons of our country. B. Boren Farmer Utakamand For miles around the gently undulating hills and walls cloth ed with the lush greenery of the Nilgiris, he is known as the blind farmer. From the bountiful earth he earns his living with hard work and steady. Perseverance Fifteen years ago, in near despair, at the almost total loss of vision in both eyes due to retinitis, Boren joined the NAP Tata Agricultural and Rural Training Center for the Blind at Fansa near Gujarat. TASIB is a unique project where the blind are given training in agriculture, horticulture, poultry and dairy farming, eventually. Enabling them to settle in villages and cultivate their own plots independently with generous assistance in the form of land, fertilizers, seeds, implements, and technical guidance. Boren picked up things very fast and showed himself to be highly intelligent and excellent at practical work. On leaving Taseb in 1962 he was given assistance for start ING a small poultry and dairy farm and attempts were made to opt in land for him. In November 1962, the collector allotted him one acre of land at Fernhill, three miles from Utakamand. It was fallow land full of June Delay growth, but it was close to his house and had a good road transport service. With money obtained from the Nilgiri Rotary Club, Boren cleared the jungle and cultivated half the plot, planting potatoes. This did not bring in much profit, so he planted a second crop of radish. Due to the initiative he showed he got the title to his land in December 1963. 
gradually with the timely assistance of various individuals. Like the district veterinary officer, the block development officer, the resettlement officer, TASIP, and several Rotary and Lions clubs, Boren made slow but steady progress. He built a road from his plot to the main road as there was no proper path for transporting vegetables harvested on the farm. Next, he built a tool shed for his implements, insecticides and manure and a cattle shed for the sheep he had started to breed for their wool. In 1970 at a cost of Rs 15, 000 he erected a small house of his own with help from Tesib and Tisco, and in 1975 he added another storehouse from the profit that he made. Married in 1972. Boren is now the father of two children. He is a progressive farmer who keeps in touch with latest techniques and government schemes. On the farm, he works along with his laborers and supervises them. He is wise enough to abandon projects which prove unprofitable like his poultry and dairy venture. He has repaid all his loans and has raised his annual income four times over within the last six years, plus what comes in from the sheep breeding. His hobby beekeeping which he has started with the help of the Khadi board. For recreation he loves to listen to the monthly magazines produced for the blind by the talking book studio, Bombay. He has a special attachment to Tesib, naturally, and keeps in constant touch. How he wishes more and more blind people would realize the fair promise of a profitable living out of the good earth. Akbal Karim Businessman, Stad Umbrellas Bombay The car comes round, the tall young man descends the steps, briefcase in hand, and is whisked away to his office just like any other smart executive this one happens to be blind. Only it is 10 years now since Akbar Karim plunged into the family business of manufacturing the well-known stag brand Umbrellas. He is wholly and solely in charge of the factory where the umbrella tubes are produced and, with his father, also manages the other section where the umbrellas packaged. Manufacturing of the tubes involves welding, rolling, cutting and electroplating of steel rods. Yeah. Whirling machinery spell danger to a man moving amongst them without sight. But Akbar can do it because he is so used to it now. Loss of sight for him was a very gradual process extending over the years, so he had the time to acquire the necessary know-how and learn his way around. In his father's office he deals with the administrative work correspondence, problems relating to income tax, licenses, government rules and regulations and similar bureaucratic red tape. Where the assembly section is concerned, Akbar points out that there is excellent scope for the employment of the blind involving, as it does simple, repetitive jobs like putting on ribs and handles. He cites the example of Ethiopia which stopped importing umbrellas from India a few years back. An exorbitant duty was imposed on imported. Umbrellas and manufacture was started in the country itself, the entire industry being reserved exclusively for the blind. Why can't we do that here? In fact, Akbar did offer to train blind people under him, but nobody came forward because this is a seasonal industry and does not guarantee a permanent job. Similarly, setting up in business for a blind person is a difficult needs heavy proposition. It Financial investment and a preparedness to face cutthroat competition. Akbar is a product of St. Maria's High School, Bombay. Most Karims are, it seems, and of he had Sydenham College. Some idea of taking law eventually but family circumstances willed it otherwise. He likes to relax with music all varieties, Indian, Western, both classical and light, or with a book preferably dealing with history or politics with an occasional detective novel thrown in for good measure. He keeps current topics, is abreast of interested in all that goes on around him and is filled with a quiet determination to make the most of his life. Praveen Dandia Development Officer, National Association for the Blind Bombay What a cruel irony of fate that Praveen Dandia would not have achieved what he has had he not become blind at an early g. 
one of six children of a poor tailor of Surat town, in the ordinary course of things he would have followed his father's profession with little or no formal education. But at the age of five, Praveen fell victim to ignorant superstition. Two of his brothers having died shortly after being vaccinated, his parents were against vaccinating their remaining son, and Praveen became blind through smallpox. Four years later, after much initial parental opposition, through the persistence of Mr. S. Basrai, a blind Congress social worker of Surat, Praveen was sent to Bombay to acquire an education. Today Praveen holds an MA degree of Bombay University and a Government of India and writing in Braille. Diploma in Teaching the Blind He is a member of the Blind Mains Welfare Association, Rajkot, a member of the Executive Council of National Association for the Blind and has recently been appointed as its Development Officer a well-deserved reward for all his dedicated work. In 1969 he attended the second convention of the International Federation of the Blind at Colombo, Ceylon, as presentative of the Blind Mains Association, Bombay. In 1971 he was one of the delegates invited by the German War Blind Association to observe blind welfare work in Germany. He has also visited Holland and the UK. From 1969 till he secured his present position, Ravine worked. As home visitor come social case worker for the Blind Mains Association, Bombay. As such, he kept contact with over 200 blind adults and children, visiting them in their homes, teaching them indoor mobility, reading and writing in braille handicrafts, and trying to gain admission for them in the various institutions working for the blind. His work involved extensive field trips and a lot of counselling. Praveen is an excellent example of the extraordinary range of mobility the blind can acquire. Unescorted He moves from place to place, anywhere in this sprawling city. All that is necessary, says Praveen, is confidence and determination. He is particularly happy that his current job enables him to do something for the blind. Especially those who are poor, I'm one of them, he says. I have passed through the same hopes and fears and know how bitter is the struggle. I am happy that I am of some service to them and I am very proud that I am able to support my aged parent financially. Whatever the future holds Praveen is determined never to leave his chosen field of work. He had best an intimate relationship with the blind clients. During the period of his tenure as a development officer, and head of the NAB India State Branches Department. He travelled throughout our country and developed NAB State Branches in 26 states of our country. He had implemented a lot of schemes for the welfare of the blind. As the time goes on he was promoted as a Director of State Branches Department and Client Service Department. He became an Executive Director of NAB India too. Under his able leadership NAB India established a service delivery program committee in 1992 to deal with the blind clients and providing them the services to make them self-sufficient and promote their socio-economic rehabilitation. In 1994 the committee established NAB Client Service Department MR. Praveen Dandia was the first director of the department and Mr. Hemant Patil became a rehabilitation officer. The team worked to develop new avenues of self-employment of the blind through machines such as weighing scale, popcorn makers, sewing machines, leather stitching machines, leather cutting machines, embroidery making machine, floor mill, grinders, Pepsi cola maker, paper plates and bowls molding machines etc. Under this schemes thousands of uneducated, Unskilled and untrained blind persons' socio-economic rehabilitation had achieved the department also provided financial assistance to thousands of blinds for their medical, educational, assistance at the time of natural calamities and better living of blind families. The department reached to its golden era under the leadership of Mr. Hemant Patil as a deputy director. The department activities has fetched a lot of donations from the social service clubs, trusts and personal donors. The department had developed a ladies' braille wrist watch in India in coordination with Hindustan Machines and Tools Limited. 
This watch made available to blind women in our country at the lowest price. Mr. Dandia had also worked as an honorary secretary and the president of Blind Men's Association, Mumbai. Nowadays it is known as a Blind Persons Association. Under the efficient leadership of Mr. Dandia BPA, Mumbai helped thousands of blind persons to meet their needs such as educating children of the blind parents, hutment repairing, medical expenses of the family and helping the families at the time of natural calamities. The home teaching service was very much effective to identify the new blind clients, providing them counseling, admitting them to the various trainings and achieving their socio-economic rehabilitation. BPA's most appreciable activity is helping the blind hawkers operating their hawkings by the roadside, railway stations, railway bridges, running Mumbai locals and long distance trains. Mr Dandia also achieved ultimate goal of his life to develop and established his two daughters Mitali and Hithal after the demise of his wife when the girls were too small. Thank God before he took his last breath the both daughters were very well established in their life. Hemant J Patil Honorary Secretary National Association for the Blind India